Hi there, this is Pete with BoardGameBoost.com. Thanks for joining me. In this video, I'll be demonstrating the use and assembly of the CaddyMax product from BoardGameBoost.com. This is a versatile, customizable game accessory that can be used with any game. And uh, by the way, the bits I'll be using for the first half of the demonstration here come from the game Anachrony by designers Richard Amon, Victor Peter, and David Turksey. So as you can see in its current form, it is serving a, as an organizer for these game bits. And right now it has a clear plastic lid on top that is holding all these bits in place. And this is if you want the Caddy Max to serve a storage function for one of your favorite games. So to take this lid off, uh, there is a special trick to it. We're gonna put our thumbs right here on this part of the sidewall and use our fingers right here and just put some pressure and pop it up on that side and then we're going to turn it around and do the same thing on the other side and then the lid comes off nice and cleanly. So in looking at these bins you can see that there are ramps on both sides of each bin so that bits can be removed very easily from multiple different angles. Uh, the other nice thing is that the bins can be very narrow as long as a finger can get in and then uh, it, the, the bits will slide right up the ramp very easily and out. These walls can be adjusted as needed using all of these slots. Uh, I'll demonstrate that in a moment. But with that, you can make as many bins as you need and make them any size that you need as well. So with that, I'll bring in an empty Caddy Max. And while I have these side by side, I'll let you know that if you buy this product, you have the choice of making the inner color either white or black. And then you have an array of colors to choose from for the outer walls, as well as the support beam right here. The other thing I'll note to you while I have these two here is that these devices are fully stackable like so and it does stack and hold them in all four directions. So if you have multiple of them, you can stack them nice and neatly. Okay, so now that we have an empty Caddy Max to look at, you can see the different slots for the walls. They pop out with just a little pressure, but they are held in securely, so you don't have to worry about them coming out accidentally during gameplay. Now, if we were to take all of these walls out, I'll show you where the real versatility of the product comes in. These inner ramps right here are removable and they're split in half so you can remove both or just one. Uh, you just rock it back and forth a little bit and it will snap out. You can see it's its own standalone module here. So let's do it with the other side as well. And now we have an open pit. So we can do a couple of things with this. Uh, first and foremost you can roll dice in there. Um, so it does serve as a dice tray. We can also use it as a card tray. So let's say we wanted to um, have these cards in there to draw. And by the way, the bits I'm using for the second half of the demonstration are from the game Star Wars Rebellion, designed by Corey Konichka. So I'm simply adding these walls in, and they stay secure because they're still gripping the outer wall. And again, right here. And so now I have two card wells that are very easily drawn out because of these ramps on the outside. And because these walls are adjustable, you can make these card wells any width that you need based on the card sizes that you're playing with. If you're playing with really small cards like this, uh, it's best to use it with these middle ramps in, which I'll demonstrate in a moment. Another thing you can do when you have this open pit and these divider walls is you could even put a wall right here in the middle, in the slots in the middle, so that now you have a fully solid wall. And that way, if you're playing a game where you're rolling uh, defense dice on one side and attack dice on the other, uh, you have that wall dividing them. 
those inner ramp walls are broken into two halves. So let's go ahead and put one half back in. And now let's put some walls right here near the end of that. So you can use this for a few different functions. Let's say you want to roll the dice over here, but on this side you want to have some dice in a, a pool for use. And then maybe in the other bin you want to have some damage tokens. Or another variant, you want to use this side for dice, and maybe on the other side, you want to have your tactics cards available. And I'll show you one more example. Let's say on this side, we want to have some cards to draw. So I'll put some cards over there and I'll use some more walls here to uh, get nice and tight up to that stack, like so. And then maybe on this side, I want to store some game bits. So I'll put some walls in as needed for whatever bits I might be storing. Uh, maybe I want some damage here and some dice or some other bits here. And that way I have another variant of an organizer here. And these cards are available to draw very easily. And if I ever want to put the lid back on, I simply line it up and pinch down like so. And you'll hear it snap into place. And then once again, everything is stored nice and securely. So those are just a few examples of the different ways you can use the Caddy Max product. Uh, for, the for the remainder of this video, I'll be demonstrating the glue-free, snap-together assembly that is required if you choose to purchase this product. In this section of the video, I'll guide you through the assembly of the Caddy Max product. First and foremost, you do want to make sure you have a flat, hard surface to work on, as there will be sections where you need to apply a delicate yet firm pressure to snap pieces together. When you receive the product in, your, in the mail, you're going to receive a stack of these brackets that contain all of the parts. So the first step is to break all of the parts out of these brackets. Uh, you don't want to peel any of the paper off quite, quite yet because there is one step we're going to do first. So go ahead and break all the parts out of the brackets and we'll move on to the next step. There are several pieces within the set, specifically these pieces shown here, that have slots with pieces still nested within them. So the next step is going to be punching out those pieces. This is relatively straightforward to do and I'll show you a trick to make it pretty easy. However, there are some special instructions I want to give you for a couple pieces as well. Let's start with these two colored pieces that have the Caddy Max logo etched into them. I find the easiest way to punch these pieces out is to take one of the wall pieces that came with your set. Uh, you don't have to remove the paper. In this case, I've already removed the paper from this, but if you wanted to uh, reduce fingerprints on it for whatever reason, you could leave the paper on as well. But simply take a piece and you're going to apply some pressure. Now when we work with these colored pieces that have the Caddy Max logo etched into it, as you do this step you want to make sure that the logo is facing up rather than down. And I'll explain why that is later. So making sure the Caddy Max logo is face up, you want to take this tool and use the little nub here and just apply some pressure to the middle of the, of the slot. And you can see that it snaps right out. I'm going to do that for all of these slots that have pieces still in them. Just apply a little pressure and you can see the pieces break out. Now if some stick in there you can just use the edge here or the back of your hand and just pull them out. So again you want to continue doing that and making sure that the logo, the etch here is face up. Okay so I'm just going ahead and punching these out. Okay, it's pretty straightforward. There's another piece that I'm going to show you a special technique for. 
in your set, you'll also have two pieces that look like this with these little uh, arms sticking out. But to punch these out, you want to be careful because this is a thin piece and it could uh, break if you put a lot of pressure. So you always want to make sure you keep a finger near the area that you're applying pressure. So again, I'm going to use this wall piece and the little nub on the bottom to just go down the line and apply some pressure to each piece and snap it out. It's relatively easy to do. It just takes a little pressure. I use the edge of this nub rather than the full flat surface because again, that's uh, going to be the easiest to get through. Now you can see some of these haven't pushed all the way through. As long as you make the initial snap, then you can just use uh, the corner of this and uh, they'll punch right out as you see. Now just a quick word of warning in case you have pets or small children around. This process does create a lot of these small pieces uh, that could potentially be choking hazards. So you do want to make sure you're doing this in a safe wide area where you can collect all these pieces when you're done. So again, just go down the line, continue adding a little pressure and snapping out these parts. Before moving on to the next step, be sure you punch out all the other pieces that have these slots in the middle using the same technique. Once you've punched out all of the slots in the pieces that have them, it's time to move on to the next step, which is removing the protective paper from both sides of each piece. As with most products from BoardGameBoost.com, each piece will have these tabs protruding from them, which look like letter Bs. The B stands for break off, and what you want to do is look for one of the two Bs that has a line underneath it, and just apply some pressure pushing away from you. As you can see, that snapped off and what that does is it grabs the paper on the other side so that you have a start to the paper and it makes it really easy. This way it'll go very fast as you won't have to waste time picking for an edge of the paper with your fingernail. Once you've finished taking the paper off all of the pieces, you'll be left with a series of parts. And those parts will be in two colors. There will be an interior color which will be either black as shown here or white if you selected that. And you'll have your exterior color parts from which there are a number of colors to choose. In this example, I'll be using blue. On top of that, you'll also have nine of these clear walls. You'll only need these when using the product. You don't need them for assembly. So let's go ahead and take the parts we need for the next step. I'm going to need all four of my colored exterior pieces and these two pairs of interior color pieces. Again, these will either be black or white. So what we're going to do is start by taking one of our exterior walls and place it face down, that is logo side down. And I'm going to start by taking this piece that has these uh, grooves on the exterior here. And as you can see, this lines up right here to these two holes. There's a long tab and a short tab and that corresponds to this long and short tab here. Okay, so I'm just going to line it up and apply some force straight down and you can hear it snap and as you can see it snapped into the wall. Okay, you do want to make sure that it is securely snapped in there, that there's no air or gaps here. Okay, and if there is, just go ahead and put it down and again make sure you're putting your force straight down very carefully. You certainly don't want to have a lot of lateral force that will cause this to snap left or right. Okay, so just grip it firmly and go straight down. All right, and now the other thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this piece and we're gonna go right next to it. As you punch out these holes, perhaps you can see it, it's kind of hard to see, but on the underside, the side which you're punching away from, it does leave a tiny scar, as you can see here. Now, this isn't a big deal, but aesthetically, you may not want to see those. So we always want to make sure those are facing down. The scars are not visible right here. See that? So now we're going to use that side face up over here. Okay. So we're going to line up. And again, just like the other piece, there's a large tab and a small tab. And they correspond right here. And we're going to go in at a slight angle because you see these arms are going to interlock here. So you just want to put pressure down just like the other piece, but just at a slight angle bent back. And then once you've pushed it down a little bit, it'll fit right in. Okay. So you just want to make sure both pieces are snapped in fully and they are. And again, if you need to just wiggle it a little more or add a little more pressure, that's fine until they're fully snapped in. 
Okay, don't worry if these aren't snug together yet. We'll fix that when we add the other wall. So now we're going to do the exact same thing on the other side. I'm going to take this large piece, match up the tabs to the slots, snap it down, apply some downward pressure. And then I'm going to take this piece, and we already know, because we did this one, that the scarred side, if you will, is going to be face down. So there's no nothing to worry about there. Line up the tabs. Apply some pressure down, and then these these arms will fit right in to the slots in the wall. Okay? So far, so good. We're all set. The next step is to add the two colored stabilizer walls. So again, I'm using blue. These are blue. They will be whatever color it is you selected for your product. You can see that there are two remaining slots in our wall, so we're just going to take it. These don't matter. They don't have an upper, down, left, and right. doesn't matter. Just go ahead and snap it in right there and do the same thing on the other side. Okay. Now to complete this phase, we're going to go ahead and take our other colored wall and now we're going to make sure that the logo is facing us. And we're going to lightly line it up so that all these parts are lined up with their slots. Now you just want to put a nice little light pressure down, not a lot of pressure, so that you can kind of get all these pre-started. You can hear them kind of snapping into place. And you can see also that they're all lined up. Now once you have that done, it's time to apply some very careful but firm pressure to get this started. So I'm going to stabilize with my one hand and use my thumb on the other. And I'm just going to put pressure straight down. Now as you do this, you want to make absolutely sure that the only place you're ever applying pressure is directly over the joint directly over the slot and tab if you put pressure anywhere else you do risk breaking it especially this little corner piece here so always make sure that your pressure is with your thumb directly over now you may need to just move it around a little bit reach through here as you go back and forth adding pressure okay you can use both thumbs if you want again just making sure that you're very careful with where the pressure is being added you can look down the side here to see how you're doing. I've made a lot of progress, but as you can see, I still have some space to go. So I'll just go back and add some more pressure. You do have to be firm at times. As long as you're following the rules, putting straight down pressure on the table and right over those joints, you should be fine. Now, as you can see, I'm pretty much locked in at this point. So you do want to make sure just on both sides that you're fully, fully snapped in everywhere. The next step is adding this large bottom piece to the underside. So we do want to flip this over and you can tell for sure that it's upside down by looking at the logo. If it's upside down, of course, you're looking at the bottom here. And with this piece, just like with the others that you punched out, uh, there will be one side that has some little tiny pockmark scarring from the punch out process. So you want to make sure that that side is facing you, facing up, because again, we're working with the underside and that way it'll be facing the bottom. Okay, so once you've got that, you wanna go ahead and line this up. Now you see there are some slots here on the bottom of our uh, walls and there are slots on the edge of this right here. So you just wanna line them up on both sides. And as you can see, it's sitting very nicely on top of those slots. And then you just wanna add some pressure over the slots and you'll hear it snap into place. Once you get the initial snap done, you wanna just check here along the edge to make sure it's fully snapped in. If it's not, just apply some pressure with your thumbs right over the slot and it'll snap in. In this case, I'm all, I'm all snapped in. So now we have the core unit completed. That's all there is to it, to the base tray. These are the only parts that are left besides all of the clear wall pieces. And these build the inner ramps that go into the center of the unit. Uh, you're gonna make two identical copies of it. So let me just show you how one goes together and you'll build the other one the same exact way. This assembly is quite simple. You wanna make sure when you're working with these that you always have the uh, pocked mark side, the scarred side, if you will, from the punch out process facing inward. And I'll show you how to do that. So we're going to find that side that is uh, scarred. It looks like it's this side. So we're going to have that face up in this case. Then I'm going to take one of these triangle pieces. And again, with the others, just like the other pieces, there's going to be a large slot and a small one. 
large and small that just matches up and just like everything else you've done so far you're just going to line that up and apply some downward pressure make sure that it's firmly locked in if it's not just add a little more pressure and then go ahead and do the exact same thing with the other slot and you'll hear it snap in just lift it up and look down the line to make sure it's all the way in and in this case it is now we're going to take our other piece and again you're going to want to make sure that the pockmarked side or the scarred side if you will is again face up then we're going to take the other piece that we already assembled partly and once again you're going to make sure that the slots align a big one and a small one so align all four tabs with their slots and then just apply the same downward pressure you'll hear it snap in and then once you do that just pick it up and see if you're fully snapped in i actually have a little bit more to go there so another way you can do this for this piece is that you can kind of pinch together on top and you heard it snap again. So it looks like I am now at this point fully secure. So we've finished one of the two inner ramp pieces. Go, go ahead and apply the same technique to build the other one. Now you have your two identical inner ramp sections, which as demonstrated in the first half of this video are used to go in the middle of the Caddy Max unit like so, depending on what you're using the product for. That's pretty much it. As shown in the beginning as well, the only other pieces are this uh, lid, which uh, snaps on securely. Simply line it up, add some pressure down like this to snap it into place. Make sure, looking along the line, that it is fully snapped down. And when you want to remove it, simply put your fingers right here and your thumbs uh, on this, this area here of the walls and apply some upward pressure with your fingers. Flip it around and do the same thing on the other side and your lid is free. And lastly, your walls simply snap in and out in any of these slots as needed to make the bins and different areas that you need for whatever game you're playing. That's pretty much it. If you have any questions at all about assembly or the product in general, please don't hesitate to message me. I'm always happy to help in any way that I can. Thanks so much for joining me and for your interest in this product. And if you buy it, I certainly hope you enjoy it. Until next time, remember, if you're playing, you're already winning.